With the Mark IV 3D printer now taking shape and the build coming along nicely, it's time to continue to concentrate on the carriage assembly and build up the extruder. With a completely new design in comparison to the predecessor, named by Prusa as the Nextruder, so lots of new parts here, some of them rather delicate so care needs to be taken throughout. With that said, after removing all electronic and plastic parts across both parts boxes, let's get started with one of the most important parts, the large aluminum heat sink which doubles as the body of the Nextruder. Place the Hall filament sensor into the neck of the heat sink and secure into place very carefully with a single M2.5 by 6 screw, which needs a T8 bit. You don't want to apply too much pressure and crack the board here. Next we need to construct the Prusa ball holder by holding the plastic part and inserting a spring, followed by a magnet, and finally a steel ball in that precise orientation. So in essence the order looks as shown here. Once ready, insert into the heatsink on the opposite side to the sensor board we previously installed. Notice the protrusion on one side, this faces downwards, with the ball being closer to the edge of the heatsink. So when looking down from the top you should see the ball protruding through part of the hole as in the example here. The way this works is that as the filament is pushed through, the ball is pushed to the side and the magnet triggers the sensor letting the printer know filament is inserted. With that in place we'll start to work on the extruder idler assembly with these two 3D printed parts. We need to install bearings into this, so begin by inserting 2.9 by 8.5 pins into the lower idler part B. Drop on both supplied bearings and cover with the other half of the lever before securing into place with a single M3 by 6 screw. Take care not to over tighten since we're screwing into plastic here so you don't want to strip any threads. In addition both bearings need to turn freely without any resistance. Once in place from the same side push a tubular spacer into the assembly. The bottom of the spacer must be flush with the bottom part of the idler assembly as in this example. Place this to one side for the moment while we work on the extruder motor in the meantime. So with the extruder motor in hand being the last motor available so not easy to confuse, begin by dropping a 5x10 spacer over the shaft so it rests down on the bottom, before placing the heatsink into position on top of the motor in this orientation, so with the motor cable facing upwards and the heatsink cables facing to the right side, after which we can lower the 3D printed main plate down on top. Notice the orientation of the part here particularly the small cutout which is in the lower left corner. Place the constructed piece carefully to one side for the moment as we'll now move to the small nextruder box within which we find our main gearbox assembly. So we're going to build the gearbox now and it's very important this is done accurately and correctly. Begin with the gear assembly adapter in hand and carefully lower the adapter down on top of the assembly. It should sit flush so that the smaller top gears fit neatly into the pockets in the adapter. Once in place the next step is to slide the gear ring over the adapter and down into place, although looking at the teeth in this ring, notice how one side is completely straight while the opposite side is very slightly chamfered. This is important since the chamfered side must face downwards as you lower it into position from the top. Don't be concerned if the ring doesn't feel like it's turning smooth just yet, it will do once the plastic tool has been removed. Now holding the entire structure in place, lower onto the motor shaft so that the shaft enters the hole in the central gear. Do not force the unit down at all, we're letting gravity do all the work here, so slowly turn the entire assembly until it drops itself down into place, after which the gear adapter can be removed. Inspect the assembly, it should look exactly as demonstrated here. The gear ring and the gear assembly should be completely flush. Also note that there must be no gap between the ring and the main plate. If you see a gap, remove the planetary gear assembly and reposition it once again. At this point you can place the gear tool back on the assembly to rotate and ensure everything is completely smooth, 
Although if you find the 3D printed part tolerances are too tight, as in my example here, remove the tool and carefully move the ring gear alone to ensure the cogs inside are meshed to the central motor pinion and freely rotating. So as we see here, the central motor pinion is fixed while the gears are rotating around it completely free. Once happy, we can proceed to insert the idler assembly we prepared earlier between the ring gear and the extruder motor where there is a cutout for the idler in the main plate. Secure these parts together by inserting a single 3x25 socket set screw. Tighten into position without over tightening. Bear in mind it doesn't go completely in or sit flush with the ring gear. It should protrude slightly above the ring. Now we want to apply a small amount of lubricant all around the inner teeth of the ring and gear assembly. You don't want to go crazy with the grease here, just a small amount is perfectly adequate. Wipe off any excess with a paper towel if need be, although it will spread itself around as the cogs turn while in use. We can now take the gearbox cover and flip it over to ensure the plastic ring is inserted into the centre of the part already. The colour may vary, but the part is the same irrespective of colour regardless. If this ring isn't present, you can still continue with the build, but before you start using the printer, contact Prusa support for a replacement. The ring is important since it ensures smooth movement of the planetary gear. Either way, cover the planetary gear and secure into place with three M3 by 25 screws. Do not over tighten the screws here as it can cause binding. Just a relatively snug fit is all that's required. So extruder really starting to take shape nicely now and it's on to building up more of the idler swivel door that will attach to the side of the extruder. We'll need a couple of small printed parts for this section so with these three pieces to hand we're ready to continue. Begin with a side section and feed through a single M3 by 20 screw on the larger end. Drop on a spacer before going through the opposite end and securing into place with a single M3 nylon lock nut. Hold the nut and tighten the screw just lightly. The spacer must rotate freely, so do not crank down too far on the screw. On to the opposite end now, where we insert the idler nut into the assembly in this orientation. Take special note to ensure orientation of everything is correct before inserting a single M3 by 20 screw through the parts. And again secure with an M3 lock nut while you tighten the screw. The lock nut will hold the screw in place, so no need to go super tight here. The idler nut we inserted into the middle must be able to move freely, just like the spacer on the other end. Place this to one side for the moment, and for now we turn our attention back to the extruder assembly, specifically the top end. We'll need two M3 by 30 screws next, so with those to hand, drop on a 15 by 5 spring onto each screw before pushing both screws through the protrusion on the heatsink just above the motor. There are no threads inside here, so the screws should go straight through. And screw directly into the idler swivel assembly we just prepared. Take care to install in the orientation shown here and stop tightening as soon as the screw tips reach the front face of the idler nut. So at this point, take a moment to double check the screw tips are flush and that the orientation is correct with the two dots visible up top. If all is okay, you should now be able to close the idler door and lock it with a reassuring click. Okay, so almost ready to attach the entire extruder assembly to the x-axis carriage now. Before doing that though, we need to install the NTC thermistor, which goes into this hole on the motor side of the heatsink. Once in place, secure it with a M3 by 4 grub screw going in from the side. Tighten gently, but firmly, as applying too much force here could cause permanent damage to the thread, so just enough to make sure it's snug. Now the official guide does state to insert the two thumb screws at this point, but the next few steps are easier without them in place just yet, so keep them to one side and we'll come back to them when needed. For now, we're finally ready to install the next extruder to the X carriage. To do this, place the next extruder with the motor side up onto the previously installed spaces on the X carriage. Note that there is a small cutout in the plastic carriage just here. Guide the thermistor cable through this cutout, taking care not to pinch any cables. Once in place and with the heatsink holes lined up with the spacers, insert the first M3x10 screw into the middle hole. 
followed by the two remaining M3 by 10 screws in the two remaining holes. Once in place, give all three a final tighten. Next, we need to get the thermistor cable connected. Locate the cable channel on the left side of the X carriage before guiding the thermistor through the cable channel and up to the love board. If your idler door is closed, release it for more space. Before connecting to the top, just above the larger X buddy board connector. Hot end fan next, which is positioned over the heatsink here. Although note that the side with the sticker goes towards the rear against the heatsink, so it can't be seen from the outside. In addition, the fan cable must be pointing towards the lower left corner. So once correctly in position, proceed to secure with two M3 by 18 screws. No need to go crazy tight here, so just go in until snug. Once in place, guide the fan cable up the cable channel and connect it to the lower slot on the love board. With fan cabling all in place now, we can proceed to insert the two thumb screws from earlier, just loosely at this point, enough so that they just hold in the threads. Ok so we're on to our all new hot end assembly now with that all metal filament guide. So with it in hand, locate the hole in the heatsink from the bottom of the extruder, push the hot end assembly all the way into the heatsink, bearing in mind the hot symbol on the heater block faces outwards towards you. And once inserted, you should be left with a 2mm gap between the heatsink and the brass part of the nozzle. At this stage, while pushing the hot end assembly in, firmly tighten both thumb screws. Check and ensure no cables are being pinched between the thumb screws and the heatsink. That's the hot end now in place, so the next step is to get it plugged into the love board. To do this, guide the hot end thermistor through the cable channel in the X carriage and connect it to the love board in the top left connector, as shown here. Finally, guide the hot end heater cable through the same cable channel and connect it to the love board in the uppermost slot, going in from the left side. Hot end now installed, leaving just one free connector on the love board here, reserved for the part cooling fan which we'll install next. We'll begin by constructing the fan door for the part cooling fan to sit into. So with the door in hand, another 3D printed part here, proceed to insert a magnet into the pocket on the inside of the fan door, just below the hinge. The fan will sit in this orientation, so with the sticker side facing downwards and the fan cable protruding from the opposite side to the hinge, although we need the cable to root through to the hinge side behind the fan, and that's done using the channel that's built into the door itself. So proceed to guide the cable through the channel in the plastic part, after which we can swing the fan over and back into place on top of the fan door before securing it to place using two M3 by 6 screws, one top left and one bottom right. Once secure, if there's too much slack here, pull on the cable very gently in order to reduce that slack as much as possible. Next, we'll install the fan shroud, this printed part here. Turn the fan door assembly in this orientation, so the back facing towards you and the hinge and fan cable to the top, after which we attach the shroud to the right side, before securing together with two M3 by 10 screws. Going into plastic here, so no need to over tighten, just a nice snug fit is all that's required. Time to grab hold of another magnet now, recall the first magnet that was installed on the side by the hinge. Slowly get the free magnet close to the magnet in the fan door in order to find out which two sides are attracted to each other. Be careful that the magnets do not directly stick together as it will be difficult to separate them. Instead you can try it at an angle like this so that you can remove it easily. And once you have the attracted side located, mark it with a permanent marker. Followed by a quick double check. Next, locate the slot for the magnet on the left side of the X carriage beside the two hot end thumb screws. And with the marked side of the magnet facing you, proceed to insert the magnet down into the slot. Note that this magnet can't be removed from the plastic slot after insertion. We're now ready to attach the fan door hinge into the appropriate hinge in the X carriage. Holes in both parts must be aligned. After which we can drop down a single M3 by 30 screw before tightening into position. Bear in mind you want to tighten all the way, but then back out at least a quarter of a turn, or enough so that the fan door can move freely. 
When tensioned correctly, the inserted magnets should grab and hold the door at the correct angle while printing, but otherwise it should swing relatively freely. All that's left now is to connect everything to the love board, starting with the motor cable up top, which plugs directly into the connector right beside it. Next, move to the right side and connect the load cell cable coming out the right side of the heatsink to the upper slot on the right side of the love board. And the same with the filament sensor cable, which goes into the remaining lower slot. All that's left is the fan cable on the opposite side, which connects to the remaining middle slot on the left side of the love board. If you follow this guide closely, your connections should mimic this diagram. Finally, reach for the 3D printed love board cover, as well as the side plate, which we need to install to finish off the extruder completely. Starting with the side plate first, curve and arrange the cables on the right side of the extruder in a clockwise direction before covering with the plate and securing with a single M3 by 10 screw, taking special care not to pinch any cables in the process. Finally, back up top, push all cables inwards towards the extruder to make more space around them before sliding the love board cover over the top and proceeding to push it all the way down, again taking care not to pinch any cables as you go, and far enough so that the two plastic covers meet together perfectly. And that's our Mark IV Nextruder assembly finally complete. This is probably the hardest part of the entire build due to all the small components and connections. And we're on the home run now with the only main part left to install being the bed. Although before we do that, we're going to finish off the X axis by tensioning the belt we've previously installed. Belt tensioning may not even be necessary if your belt is already tensioned quite well, but it never hurts to double check. So we begin by slightly releasing all the screws holding the motor, otherwise the tensioner won't work since the motor must be able to move. The idea here is to use the ball end allen key to tighten the screw on the rear side of the X end motor, but after each turn or two, check the tension in the belt. Prusa have released a specific app that listens to the tension as you flick the top belt, which is a great concept, but some have reported it to provide inconsistent results, so your mileage may vary. When you achieve optimal tension, tighten the motor screws back up. As a final check, in order to test the tension manually, grasp and hold the flat part of the X motor shaft with pliers to prevent it from rotating. Gently try to move the extruder towards the X motor. Gently being the highlighted word here, do not use excessive force. If the belt is stretched properly, you should feel a resistance and the extruder won't move at all. If the belt is too loose, it will deform and create a wave and jump over the teeth on the pulley, for which you need to backtrack and retension the belt before checking again. We're all good in my example, so with that we've completed our Z and X axes. We still have the main bed and Y axis to complete, although before that we'll concentrate on the LCD assembly in the next chapter. 